welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator 24. Nowadays, I'm exploring the Cessna C408 Sky Courier in the simulator. And in this regard, I'm making a series of videos for this plane so that I can just break down all the information related to a flight into different videos so that it's easy for you to look for a specific information on my channel. Before this, I've uploaded a video on my channel in which I've told you how to start this plane from the cold and dark state. And now this video is about takeoff and flying this plane on autopilot. Every time when I'm making a video, I'm always keeping this thing in my mind that uh, the beginners will be watching it. So that's why I just try to keep things really simple and basic and to the point. And I will just take you step by step through all the procedures. This is uh, a twin turboprop plane. And uh, if you're used to Cessna 172, then you will be easily flying it. But there are a few things that you have to understand about this plane. And once you do that, you will be flying it because it's faster than 172. And it goes up to uh, like 20,000, 25,000 feet. Today I will be doing the short flight from uh, Heathrow to Manchester. You can see the flight plan is loaded in the Garmin G1000. Garmin G1000 is actually the navigation device this plane is equipped with. This is the primary flight display on the left and on the right hand side and the middle you have the navigation display. And this is basically the panel for the autopilot. But before I talk about the autopilot and talk about this flight, let's uh, look at uh, some levers in this plane. These two are the engine condition levers. They control uh, the fuel uh, flow to the engines, left and right. Then you have uh, the propeller condition levers. They control the RPM uh, of the propellers. And uh, these two levers are for the thrust, which control the thrust generated by the engine. For takeoff, uh, you take off with full RPM. And then uh, uh, during the cruise, you can reduce it by 100, let's say. If it's over here 1,700, maybe you can just reduce it to 1,600. Or in the, on the cruise, you can keep it at 1,500. And for the descent, you keep them like really at idle. Okay. And then you control the speed with the help of the thrust levers. So I will demonstrate it to you in this flight. It's slightly different. Behavior is different. Because if you don't uh, control the speed, uh, this plane will keep on climbing. <laughs> There is one issue. You, ha you have no idea how many times I've restarted this video. <laughs> so I will just explain it to you. Now for the autopilot, um, you have uh, different options. Uh, over here, you will look at this button nav. Now if you press this button nav on the prime flight display on this part, uh, this is actually the FMA flight mode enunciator. On the FMA, you will see GPS appearing, which means that the plane will now follow uh, the GPS flight plan. So if GPS is there, the plane will follow the GPS flight plan. But if you press the nav again, you will see roll is written, which means that uh, the autopilot will maintain the roll of the plane. The plane will not turn left or right. It will just keep on going straight, but it will not follow any flight plan, not the heading or not uh, the GPS flight plan. So that's why you have to be either in the nav mode or you want to be in the heading mode if you want to uh, set the direction of the plane. Then uh, the pitch is being shown, PIT, which means that uh, uh, the plane will uh, or the autopilot will maintain the pitch of the plane whatever the pitch of the plane was at the time when you activated the autopilot so i will just take it out of the pitch mode and i will bring it to the vertical speed this is basically your climb rate or descent rate and i will set it to uh, let's say 3000 for this flight it can climb at 3000 and i can set the altitude for this flight i will be climbing up to uh, 20,000. Uh, 20, That's it. So um, this is what's required. Over here on your screen, uh, R is written. It's uh, shown over here as 85. This is basically the speed at which I will be um, pulling back on the yoke and uh, lifting this plane up in the air. Then you have this Y speed. This is basically uh, the speed at which you can just uh, go up to this uh, altitude in the shortest time. Uh, and um, X is the speed and the ideal or the optimum speed at which you can have a very nice um, angle of climb, a very high uh, climb rate in the shortest of the distance. And G is basically the speed at which you can just like uh, follow the glide slope. It's, it's like the optimum speed. But obviously, I will be going more than Y. Um, I will show it to you in this flight. It's basically difficult to keep it at 105. Uh, it's a bit tricky with this plane. I will just explain it to you once I take off. 
Now let's uh, set the altimeter. You can see this is the barometric pressure which is being shown over here. I am right now flying in clear skies. That's why it's 1013. Otherwise, whatever you get uh, from the weather, you have to just enter it over here. And you can just get it from this information, uh, weather. If you click it, you get the air pressure. So, but I'm right now flying in clear skies. That's why it's 1013. And um, the transition altitude at which I will actually be changing this barometric pressure, the given one, to the standard, will be determined by uh, the standard instrument departure or the chart which shows the departure. I am using this one. So you can see the transition altitude for this uh, runway and for this uh, airport is 6,000. So after 6,000, I will be changing it to standard. If you want to change the units, uh, you can just press PFD options, alternator units, inches or HPA. You can just change it from here. And if you want to take it to the standard, then you can just press it and it will go to the standard. I will just show it to you in this video. I hope I don't forget it. <laughs> Usually I'm forgetting it. Okay. Because in the Airbus, it keeps on blinking. So you know when to change it. Okay. Because while you're recording a video, your mind is like going here and there. You're thinking about different things. So that's why <laughs> I might skip. Uh, this is the autopilot button. So right after the takeoff, I will press this autopilot button and uh, take this plane in the autopilot mode. So everything is now good. Let's uh, set the flaps to position one. This is um, the flap setting that I will be using for the takeoff. Now let's uh, release uh, the parking brake, which is over here. And uh, let's take this plane up in the air. I will not give full throttle. You will hear a beep. Just slightly reduce your thrust levers. Now, after this, just reduce it when you hear this ping sound and uh, just get rid of this caution. Now, you can see R is nearing. I can just like lift it up and now the plane is up in the air. Now, with this, I can activate autopilot. Now, with the autopilot active, you can see that uh, the plane is trying to keep this speed. The vertical speed, which is 3000, um, as mentioned um, over here in the FMA, I can reduce it. So let's say if I reduce you to 2000, you will see the vertical speed will reduce, but the speed will increase. Which shows that this mode, in, in this mode, the autopilot is giving priority to the vertical speed. So no matter uh, what the speed is, the vertical speed will, will be maintained, but your speed will be compromised. So when I reduced um, uh, the vertical speed, you can see the speed was increasing. But if I increase the vertical speed, you will see it will decrease. Let's say if I go further up, you can see now the speed is getting compromised. But if I press this button, flight level change, let's say the, if the plane stabilizes at, let's say, on speed 130. I think the plane is also at a very high altitude I can reduce the RPMs, let's say it's uh, 1700 roughly, I can press G on my keyboard and uh, these propeller condition levers will move back and with T they go full. Okay, so I can press G. You see, this is the error that's coming. So you have to basically also reduce the thrust. And now with this, you can reduce the RPM. So if I just bring the RPM to, let's say, 1,600, you can see it's reducing. And now with this, you can see the speed is getting reduced. So I can, at this time, press uh, this button, FLC, flight level change. Now, the vertical speed is no longer the priority for the autopilot. Now, the speed is the priority. As now I'm above 7,000, I wanted to set <laughs> uh, this uh, altimeter to standard. Now, the standard barrow is appearing. Now, the plane has actually locked the speed 116 knots, and it will keep on climbing at this speed and it will keep on changing the vertical speed. So now in this mode, um, the vertical speed is no longer the priority, rather the speed is the priority. So 
116 will be maintained and the plane will keep on climbing i will keep keep the rpm at uh, 1600 like this and once the plane is at the cruising altitude then i will just further reduce it to 1500 or i can even reduce it to 1400 you will even hear the sound will also reduce for the propellers and uh, that's it but in this case uh, if um, what if i reduce the thrust if i reduce the engine thrust now you will see what happen what will happen even with this the vertical speed has started to drop because you know the plane cannot handle this so that's why you have to adjust your thrust levers in even such a way that uh, the vertical speed remains your plane actually maintains this speed and the vertical speed is also good so that's how you basically manage it the thrust lever and the propeller condition levers rpms you don't change a lot because you know at any time you need power so that's why the propellers should be rotating at the same speed and you can just change the the thrust using the thrust levers right now you can see that with this given uh, thrust setting uh, the vertical speed is 1700 but if i what if i increase the thrust you can see the vertical speed is increasing so i can now even adjust the vertical speed with the help of the thrust the plane will maintain 116 knots and it will then adjust the vertical speed as per the thrust given by the engines so this is something that you have to consider now that's it so the flight uh, is uh, on autopilot <laughs> the plane is following uh, the gps flight plan autopilot is active as you can see it in the fma and uh, right now the speed is my priority so this was about the condition and uh, propeller condition lever and the thrust lever that's it now let's talk about uh, the navigation the lateral navigation now i can at any time just press uh, this heading mode and the plane will actually fly in the heading whatever this heading bug is indicating towards as you can see i can move this knob or even this knob to change the heading and the plane will change and if i press nav again the plane will go back to the gps mode and it will start following this flight mode another thing let's say if your gps bug this is actually the knob for the heading and this is your heading bug sorry i call it the gps bug the heading bug is uh, over here in this direction and you want to point it towards the direction in which the plane is going right now just bring your cursor and uh, hold it with your left mouse button and press it with the right one and it will just get aligned with the current heading so now let it's if i take this plane out of this heading mode and if i just try to divert from this flight plan the plane will no longer follow this gps flight plan if i just change the zoom you can see it has now started to divert now this is basically your cdi which is the course deflection indicator and this is the cdi needle which tells you how much deflection uh, you have from the course or where the course actually is so if it's towards the right side it means you have to go towards the right side if it's on the left side it means you have to go towards the left side so right now the, you have a deviation towards the right side and this is actually a course so not only you have to turn in this direction but rather you have to intercept this line so if you want to follow this course either you can press the nav again let me see if the plane goes back to this mode now right now you can see heading is appearing instead of gps if i press nav now it has started to show heading but it also has uh, locked gps now and the plane is not going back to this flight plan although it should go back to this flight plan now in this kind of a mode you basically change the heading and you try to intercept this flight path and once the plane intercepts this flight plan uh, the plane uh, the autopilot again goes back to the uh, gps nav mode rather than this heading mode so that's how you do it if you deviate from the course i can turn further towards right before this point umlak or at this point i can even press direct and you know just type in the name of uh, this waypoint and i can fly directly towards this point i can also do this so let the plane go to this point i can turn further
Now you can see this coast deflection needle has started to move inside. And now you can see the plane is back in the GPS mode and heading has disappeared and it's blinking. So it means the plane is now following this GPS flight plan. So it's really simple. And then there are many other things that you can uh, just uh, do with this plane. Uh, just one thing I forgot to mention in the beginning of this uh, video is this that, you know, to make sure the flight director is on. If you see this magenta arrow, this is basically uh, the flight director. So just make sure it's being, uh, it's, uh, it's appearing over here on the prime flight display. You, you have to just turn it on. But for this plane, it's by default on. You really don't have to turn it on. If it's not on, then the plane will not follow this GPS flight plan. Now, actually, I'm waiting for the plane to reach uh, the top of climb, which is 20,000 feet. And once the plane is cruising at 20,000 feet, then uh, I will show you how basically uh, this plane behaves. Because if you don't reduce uh, the RPM on the thrust, this plane will keep on climbing. <laughs> and during the descent, it also happens. Now, you heard the sound. That means that the plane is about to level off in the next 1,000 uh, feet. So right now, it is at 19,200. Now the plane should level off at uh, this altitude, but if it doesn't, then you can reduce the thrust. And now the plane will level off. And that's how you do it. I just reduced the thrust a bit and the plane has started to level off, if it doesn't level off. Now, um, even at this uh, uh, altitude, we don't need so much power or the RPMs. I can further reduce it. I can keep it at 1,500. And if I press G on my keyboard, you will see the RPMs will further reduce, changing the pitch of the propellers, and the RPM is getting reduced. And you will hear that, you know, the sound of the propellers have also reduced. And that's it. Now the plane has leveled off at 20,000, and uh, now the speed is increasing. If I, let's say, now with this with this uh, setting of the RPM, now the plane will keep on flying in, in the same RPM. Now with this, um, uh, you can see very less uh, increase in the speed or rate of change is really low for the speed. But if I give you know, thrust maximum, if I move it, just get rid of the error. If I keep it over here, you will see the speed is now increasing. Even you can do this and RPMs will remain the same. And now the speed is reducing because, you know, the plane started to climb. So that's how you basically control it. And that's, you don't want to do. So that's how you manage uh, the thrust and uh, plus the propeller condition levers. Now you can see I've reduced the thrust and the plane is now going back to 20,000 started to climb as I told you before it will happen I can further reduce uh, the thrust and now you can see the vertical speed is more so it's a bit tricky uh, like this in this plane so you have to just control uh, the thrust levers and plus uh, the propeller condition levers and now you can see the plane will level off at 20,000 and then you can adjust the thrust levers that, you know, the plane keep on flying at 20,000. And now I can increase the thrust. You can see the vertical speed will start to reduce. It's going back when I'm increasing the thrust. And that's it. I hope uh, this was a useful video for you. Now you will be able to take this plane uh, up in the air from the runway and uh, you can fly this plane on autopilot. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section or if you want to add uh, anything to, to this video, the comment section is there for you. Thank you very much for staying with me. Have a nice day. Hope to see you soon.